You can't escape the fact that everything in the investment world involves risk. That's what my work at VTS is all about here. We're trying to maximize our rate of return while also minimizing the drawdowns. But you can't eliminate those bad periods completely. So what all of you investors watching this need to ask yourselves, is the return that you're getting worth the risk that you're taking? That's the whole game here. Today, I'm going to show you how to answer that question with a very simple formula. You won't see this anywhere else. This is something that I created called the VTS Performance score. If you maximize this number, I promise you your stress levels will drop, your confidence will rise, and you'll know that you're being adequately rewarded for the risk that you're taking when you invest your hard-earned money. First, I'll explain what the VTS performance score actually is, and then I'll go through several examples from stocks, bonds, gold, hedge funds, short volatility funds, plus my own performance since I launched VTS over 13 years ago. Now, as I've always said, looking at the annualized rate of return by itself isn't nearly enough information to know if something is a good investment or not. If something makes a 12% annual return, that sounds pretty good, right? I've got a video showing how 12% a year can make you a multimillionaire. But what if you have to suffer 50% drawdowns just to get that 12% return. Well, now all of a sudden it's not very good, is it? Rate of return doesn't matter if you're just going to pull the plug and quit when it breaches your own risk tolerance. My VTS performance score gets to the heart of the investor experience and measures whether the return is worth the risk. On the numerator, the top of the equation, we have the annualized return of the investment minus a risk-free rate. Typically for the risk-free rate, we just use U.S. Treasury yield over the same time period. So the top of the equation solves for the actual alpha above and beyond the risk-free rate. On the denominator, the bottom of the equation, we're using the average of the three largest drawdowns the investment suffered over the whole time period. Forget about variance or standard deviation. It's maximum drawdowns that are really the max pain points that investors actually feel. So let's go through a real example. This is the S&P 500 since January 1st, 2012. That's the date I launched VTS, so let's use the same time horizon. We can see the annualized rate of return with all dividends reinvested was 13.31%. Now remember, we have to subtract the risk-free rate from that, and since January 1st, 2012, the average coupon rate for the U.S. Treasury was 2.23%. So that's the top of the equation, rate of return minus Treasury yield. On the bottom, we average out the three largest drawdowns. The S&P 500 was down 33.72% during the pandemic, 25.43% in 2022, and 19.35% in Q4 2018. This means the VTS performance score for the S&P 500 since 2012 is 0.4%. Now, what does that number mean? Well, any performance score less than zero would mean that the investment is actually worse than the risk-free rate. It would mean there's no alpha at all and the investor would have been better off just holding U.S. Treasuries to maturity. If the performance score is above zero, it means there is some positive alpha there above and beyond Treasuries. And because we're measuring return in terms of downside risk, the higher the VTS performance score, the better that investment may be. A VTS performance score greater than one over a long time horizon would be accepted. This is the holy grail of investing, a rate of return that's actually higher than the average drawdowns. Now keep in mind, the longer the time frame, the lower that performance score tends to be, because if you trade long enough, all strategies will go through drawdowns. It's not that hard to avoid them for a few years, but when you include the bad market periods as well, it does require better and better investing skills to keep that performance score high. So now let's check out my performance score since I launched VTS all the way back in January 2012. There's been a lot of ups and downs in the market in those 13 years, so this is definitely a good period to measure. We've had an annualized rate of return of 22.74%, with our maximum daily drawdown coming in at 27.11%, which happened in 2022. That's what I'm calling the everything crash, because all assets, stocks, bonds, utilities, real estate, emerging markets, crypto, pretty much everything crashed in 2022. Unfortunately, there were very few places to hide, and we got hit as well. Now, our second largest drawdown of 12. 32% happened way back in May of 2012, and my third largest drawdown of 12.05% was in December 2015. Notice how aside from 2022, my drawdowns don't actually match up to the major drawdowns for the stock market in general. That's because I work very hard to provide a portfolio with low correlation to equities. I lost nothing in the pandemic, 0% drawdown. I didn't have any drawdown in the February 2018 Volpocalypse event. I made a profit in the Q4 2018 crash. If you 
you want to beat the stock market, you have to decouple and do something different than the stock market, right? So running our numbers through the formula, we get a VTS performance score of 1.20. So it's not only a lot higher than anything else on this list, as you'll see, but remember values over one represent an investment where the rate of return is actually higher than the average of the largest drawdowns. This is the single number you're trying to maximize if you want to succeed long term. If it's anything close to one over many years, you're going to know that you're being adequately rewarded for the risk that you're taking. Now let's check out performance scores from some other common assets since I launched VTS in 2012. There's that S&P 500 with a 0.42. Later I'll show you what happens if we extend that back to 1993, which you'll find very interesting. Spoiler alert, you'll see quite clearly why buy and hold investing is a terrible idea. But let's move on to 20 year US Treasury, the TLT. Annualized return of 0.42% and maximum drawdowns of around 45, 20 and 17, giving it a performance score of negative 0.06. Remember, performance scores below zero means there's no alpha at all and the investor would have just been better off holding treasury to maturity. Moving on to gold, which has had a recent recovery after a very poor decade, but now the annualized return in the last 13 years was 3.51%. However, given the large drawdown, its performance score is still only 0.05, barely edging out U.S. Treasury. The Vanguard V-Banks is a 60% stocks, 40% bonds balanced index fund. The V-Banks had an annualized return of 8.42%, with maximum drawdowns of 22, 21, and about 12 for a performance score of 0.33. Now we can even calculate performance scores for a couple of the hedge fund indexes. Annualized return of 5.36%, with a pretty large drawdown there that will be punishing, bringing the VTS performance score to just 0.22. Turns out out that even for professional asset managers with many years of experience, profiting from the short volatility trade isn't nearly as easy as all those Twitter traders who have never actually shown any performance would have you believe. On Twitter, everybody's saying they make double digit returns. It's easy money. But when real world results are compiled, it's actually very difficult to balance that risk reward ratio. The last one we'll do here is the HFRI hedge fund index. This is a composite weighted index of many different hedge funds with multiple different strategy types with at least least 50 million under management, and at least a 12-month track record. Again, not Twitter traders. These are real asset managers with track records. We can see a moderate rate of return here of 5.24%, but at least hedge funds manage to keep drawdowns reasonably low, and the VTS performance score is 0.35. Lastly, I told you I would extend that S&P 500 back to 1993. That is during a strong bull market in the 90s, so this should be pretty good, right? Well, no, because it also suffered crazy drawdowns as well. That's the double-edged sword of risk reward. It had a 9.31% annualized return for the last 30 years, but maximum drawdowns of 55, 47, and 34, bringing the long-term VTS performance score of the S&P 500 to just 0.11. So much for buy and hold on the S&P 500, right? Getting that 9% return breaches almost every investor's risk tolerance, so it's a complete non-starter. Now, of course, the entire financial industry would love it if you adopt their buy and hold portfolios because they can swoop in and get some fees off you for doing very little work on their end. But I hope you want more from your investing than just barely beating treasuries. I've proved over a 13 year period that my VTS portfolio, which focuses on risk management and reducing correlation to the S&P 500, this is definitely the superior way to invest. All investors should be looking for that higher return, low stress investing experience. If you agree with me, there's a no obligation free trial to VTS either on my website or down in the description below. You can check out all of our tactical strategies the volatility dashboard, and our growing list of courses. So now you're ready to see how all of our strategies combine to form what I call the total portfolio solution. Again, no more than five minutes a day, but volatility targeting is the best way to ensure a smoother investing experience with a higher rate of return. So make sure you check out this video next. See you next time.